Bakit ako gumaya ganun? <laughs> Tanga! Ano kasi? The real beast is here! Poco! F3! Real beast! <coughs> Pero nga, the real beast is here and my lalamunan is very damaged. Ito ang continuation natin nung Poco X3 Pro review. Di ba hindi ko nasali itong Poco F3? Well, here it is. It is one, one beastly phone. Ito mga kaibigan ay mas malupit pa kaysa kay Poco X3 Pro or pretty much any phone out there in the market. Kung si X3 Pro ay pinakamalupit sa 12K to 15K, ito naman, si Poco F3 ay pinakamalupit sa, sa lahat. Like, Ever. It is a massive step up from the Poco F2 Pro, a giant leap, well actually like a real neon, a giant leap in performance and pretty much everything like the display, cameras and things like that. Kaya design, sobrang pogi niya, so here it is. The Poco F3, Apple si Beans, and you're watching Unbox Diaries. Woohoo! <laughs> Okay, so continuing the live coverage of the Poco F3. First of all, gusto ko yung pakita yung itsura niya, no? Kaya lang, ang una nilang bilanggit is yung performance. What? The real beast performance. Pero, ito mo na yung itsura niya. Ganda, diba? Pero kamayan yan. I-cover ko yan. Ang ganda na itsura niya. Ang rason kung bakit inuna yung performance is because napakabilis ng kanyang processor. Ito ay si Snapdragon 870. Wait, let's go back to Poco X3 Pro. Poco X3 Pro ay 860 Snapdragon. Tapos, syempre, sumunod yung Snapdragon 865, the flagship processor last year. And you know what's next? The Snapdragon 870. Ito ang ginagamit ni Poco F3. Kailan, Beans? Ito ba yung flagship na processor ngayon? Hindi. The flagship processor ngayon is si Snapdragon 888. Which feeling ko ay medyo mahal pa yung presyo ng 888. At baka ilagay nila yung 888 processor sa pro version ng Poco F3. Diba? Hmm? Hmm? And I think that is why they settled for Snapdragon 870 for the Poco F3. Pero guys, this is the beast speed. Gaano pabilis itong Snapdragon 870? Meron daw siyang 3.2 GHz Prime Core. 3.2 GHz Prime Core Prime Core. Di ba si Poco X3 meron 120 Hz? Well, ito ay Poco F3 ay meron 3.2 Not Hz, but Gigahertz Better ko lang. <laughs> Dito to yun. <laughs> Last mo na yun ha. Walang kinalaman yung Hz sa display pati ito. 3.2 GHz ay ibig sabihin yan ay clock speed sa isang processor. That means uh, you don't have to know much about it. Sobrang technical niyan pero ito yung basis na kanyang speed. Okay? You just need to know na mas mabilis siya kaysa kay pinakamabilis ni Samsung na processor which is si Kirin 9000 3.13 GHz. Pinakamabilis ni iPhone which is si A14 Bionic chip. And yung pinakamabilis ni Snapdragon last year or first half last year which is Snapdragon 865. All you need to know is that it's faster than all those processors. But it's not faster than the Snapdragon 888, syempre. Ito daw ay mas mabilis pa ng 12% kay Snapdragon 865. Mayroon siya yung Adreno 650 GPU. Supports HDR gaming with a GPU performance of 10%. Not so much faster than the Snapdragon 865, no? Pero kasi, if nalaman mo yung presyo, you will not believe what this thing possesses. Sobrang halimaw nito. So, tinest nila to sa Genshin Impact at high settings at nakakuha sila ng 58 frames per second if you compare that to the Poco X3 Pro which is 50 frames per second medyo malapit lang no? malapit lang kay Poco X3 Pro ganun kabilis ganun kalupit si Poco X3 Pro so if you don't need the extra 8 FPS sa Genshin Impact ba okay na yung okay na yung Poco X3 Pro pero kasi this is very near to 60 frames per second kung uh, medyo geeky ka nerdy and maarte ka sa numbers well this is a good news for you now the question is kamusta naman ang kanyang Antutu benchmark score 600 140,758 points sa Antutu. That is a crazy score. Almost 60,000 points na mas marami pa kaysa kay Snapdragon 865. Medyo malaki yan. And compared sa Snapdragon 860 ni Poco X3 Pro, sobrang layo na. And to think, it needs this much power to just get 8 frames per second. Extra, no? Kaysa kay Poco X3 Pro. No? 50 to 58 FPS sa Genshin Impact. Ito ang kailangan mong power. So, in other words, ganun, hindi ka optimize si Genshin Impact. Kasi dapat, kung Konting power lang, konting dagdag ng speed, ay dapat malaking jump na rin yan, no? And 8 FPS lang sa same speed, there's definitely something wrong with the optimization for that game. So, ayun na naman. One of the best processors in the industry. Wow, what a statement. Bold. Hindi yung bastos, ha? Very brave, ayun. Meron din siyang same internal storage technology ni Poco X3 Pro, which is UFS 3.1 up to 256 lang. And meron siyang 8 gigs of RAM LPDDR5. Pero, ito yung main difference ni Poco X3 Pro, which makes it so much more future-proof, no? Si Poco F3 ay meron 5G. Up to 23 times faster speed than 4G. Well, 
we'll have to see. Pero ito, meron siyang Wi-Fi 6. Oh my God. Kaya lang, useless to sa ating internet dito sa ating bansa. Kasi mabagal ang internet natin. Alam nyo na yan. But anyways, this will make your phone future-proof. And that is the real beast performance of the Poco F3. What's next after the real beast performance? Well, it's the real beast display. Sabi, puro real beast. <laughs> Pero teka, di ba real is you real me? Bakit hindi na lang beast? Bakit real beast? Pangongo? Real mist? <laughs> Pero I think magkaroon ng real me beast si real me in the near future para tapatan to hopefully. Real mist? Poco F3 ay merong beast display, 6.67 inch, pares lang kay Poco X3 Pro, meron daw siyang flat screen, sinasabi niya to kasi ang mga curved display ay maraming mistouch. Meron siyang dot display, 2.76 millimeters lang daw. And ayun na nga, kinumpare niya sarili niya kay Samsung Galaxy S21 which is mas malaki yung bilog nun, 3.61. Okay, eto, eto yung wala sa Poco X3 Pro which is an AMOLED display. Meron daw siyang E4 AMOLED. E4, what does that mean? Well, isa lang siyang type of AMOLED. Mas power efficient daw siya. 15% less power consumption Tapos, 1,300 nits of max brightness Si Redmi Note 10, di ba sabi ko ay 1,100 nits lang yon. Ito ay 1,300 nits Meron siya yung true color Sabi niya, magiging very accurate yung colors niya Almost lifelike daw yung mga makikita mo sa display niya And yun, meron pa siyang crystal clear clarity HDR 10 plus Marami pa rin dyan sa mga viewers natin ay hindi nagagets ang HDR High Dynamic Range Ito ang isang sample niyan buti Isinama nila sa kanilang demo Ito yung before Medyo madilim, di ba? Yung mga shadows Ito, shadows to, di ba? Nung nilagyan na siya ng HDR 10 Plus support Mas naging klaro na siya Nakita niya mga details Kung dati sa mga sinihan Walang HDR doon Madilim halos lahat Especially kapag horror ang inyong pinapanood Hindi niyo makita sa mga madidilim na parts Ito yung solution doon You will see more now than ever before Pero it's not new Alam niyo na yan Meron na siyang 360 light sensor Sensor? Uy! Para meron ka daw great viewing at all times, no? Sinesense niya yung ilaw sa paligid nyo para nag adjust yung kanyang brightness. Meron din siyang true display, like the true tone feature ni Apple. Nagbabago yung kanyang temperature and color basta sa inyong environment. Okay. At ayun na naman si Beast Display. Wow! May sariling section ang kanyang gaming. Si The Real Beast Gaming. Okay, so hindi nila minention to sa display. Pero ayun na nga, meron siyang 120Hz refresh rate. Parang energizer naman tong background niya. 120Hz refresh rate sa kanyang yang AMOLED display so AMOLED plus 120Hz Wow, that is a flagship, true flagship feature. Pero kasi 120 hertz or 120 FPS ay hindi pa available sa gaming talaga sa Play Store. Hopefully, pero kasi this makes your phone future proof. Yun lang. Hindi to yung highlight ng display. The true highlight is 360 hertz touch something rate. Sha. Okay, so ano ba to? Ang dami na numbers. Hindi ko na magets. Masyado na ako na overwhelmed sa hertz. Kani na may gigahertz. Ngayon may 120 hertz, may 360 hertz. Well, wala to ay display pa rin no. Katulad ng 120 hertz refresh rate. Ang ginagawa ng touch something rate kung si 120 the hertz refresh rate ay pinapasmooth niya yung itsura ng display, no? Smooth movement ng animation and things like that. Ang touch sampling rate naman ay mas mabilis sa ang response ng inyong touches sa display. And buti na lang, meron din silang demo nito. Ito yung itsura nun. On most entry-level phones, mga nasa 120 to 180 hertz lang ang average speed ng mga smartphones. Tapos kapag flagship naman ang phone nyo, or yung kina Black Shark, nasa 240 hertz ang touch sampling rate. Pero si Poco F3, greater than 300 hertz. Ito yung sample niya, no? Samsung Galaxy ulit, 21 versus Poco F3. Ito yung sa kanilang testing. Genshin Impact, no? Tinatch ng machine at the same time. Same speed, same pressure, same release. Mas naunang gumalaw yung kay Poco F3. Mas responsive, di ba? Oo, meron din palang lag sa inyong display. No? The higher the hertz, the lesser the lag. Mas real-time ang inyong movement dun sa game. Nagre-respond siya agad. Ayan, no? Nauna ulit si Poco F3. Ito yung kailangan nyo sa mga tournament, no? Kasi gusto nyo, mas accurate kayo. Mas mabilis ang response. Meron din siyang dual speakers, just like the Redmi Note 10 and the Poco X3 Pro dual speakers. Kaya lang, ang unique kay Poco F3 is meron siyang Dolby Atmos. Ito yung pang sinihan na sound. Feel every dimension. Tapos ang dami. Meron pa siyang high-res audio. And not only that, high-res audio wireless. Wow. At ngayon, ano ang itsura ni Poco F3? The design is this beautiful, very elegant, very premium design. Nakakamukha ni Mi 11. Actually, mas kamukha niya si Redmi Note 10. Redmi Note 10 Pro. Pinakaiba lang. Meron siyang dalawang malalaking lens dito, di ba? Meron siya sa taas, meron sa baba. Pero pretty much, this is what the Redmi Note 10 series looks like. It is super slim. 7.8 millimeters. Super light, 196 grams, pero ang kanya likod ay made out of glass. Alright. Premium. Corning Gorilla Glass 
5. Yun lang, hindi ko maintindihan kung bakit side-mounted ang kanyang fingerprint scanner. Pwede naman in-display. Well, I think simply because they are focusing on speed and mas mabilis talaga kapag ka-physical button ang fingerprint scanner compared sa in-display. Ah? Yun lang, no? Hindi ako masyadong na-impressed sa kanyang fast charging. Why are you doing this, Poco? Di mo pa sinagad. Only 4,520 milliamperes battery and only 33 watts fast charging same as Poco X3 Pro. Sana lang naman, ginaya mo si... Mi 11, at least 55 watts of fast charging. That would have made more sense. Okay na yun. O nga pala, meron siyang tatlong colors. Meron siyang Arctic White. If you like white, oh, very elegant. Meron siyang Night Black. Very black and dark. And meron siyang special color, si Blue. Deep Ocean Blue. Na meron mga stripes. May diamond-like cut-out design sa baba. Which is a uh, gimmick. Pwede ka na sa white and black. Okay na yun. Okay na yun. Magkano kanyang cap... Ay, wait. Nakalimutan ko yung kanyang camera. Okay, so hindi masyad impressive yung kanyang camera. Although meron siyang dalawang malalaking lenses dito. Ang kanyang camera is pretty much the same as the Poco X3 Pro. Which is the Sony IMX 582 48MP lang yan. Although, half inch sensor size. Meron siyang 8MP ultra wide angle lens. And meron siyang 5MP tele macro camera. 5MP. So, I don't know. Hindi siya masyado impressive para sa akin. Nothing much to see here. Poco F3 is simply, indefinitely a gaming phone at best. They had to cut corners kaya. Camera. Cameras are expensive, but you know what's not expensive is itong phone na to. Hindi siya expensive. Starting at the price of 17,990 pesos, this is the same price as the Mi 10T last year, 6128 yon. Meron siyang early bird price, 15,990 pesos. Oh my god, 2,000 discount if bibili mo siya again again. Meron siyang 8256 version, 20,990 pesos. With an early bird price of 18,990 pesos only, this pretty much faces out the Mi 10T. Xiaomi is just cannibalizing pretty much every smartphone it has, no? Parang 6 months. Oh, Bago naman ako. Bilhin nyo na yan. Wag, wag nyo nang pansinin yung Mi 10 ko. But man, this is like so much win. Wait lang ah. Sa Poco X3 Pro, hindi na pumalakpak eh. Pero ito. Is... This deserve a clap. Sobrang, sobrang godlike nitong Poco F3. Feeling ko yung pro version ay lalabas pa on the next half of 2021. F3 muna daw. Pero para sa akin kasi, if binili mo si Poco F3 ngayon, this will take you for about one year, no? Kahit next year ka na bumulilot ng bagong phone, okay ka na. Okay na, okay ka na. And syempre, magkakaroon tayo ng full review, unboxing of this phone. I am so excited. Hopefully, you are too. Kaya kung gusto mo panoodin niya aking unboxing and full review of the Poco X3 Pro and the Poco F3, mag-subscribe ka lang, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my great content. Dito lang yan sa Unbox Diaries. I'm Ronald Sabins, and you're watching Unbox Diaries. Hoo-hoo.